Today, I will be interviewing Eric Joy, who took an unconventional route in undergrad, studying engineering at the University of New Brunswick, at the Memorial University of Newfoundland, and McMaster University. Currently, Eric is completing his Master's of Applied Science in Chemical and, and um, Biological Engineering at the University of British Columbia. Today, I will be speaking to Eric about his path and his tips for future applicants. So to begin, I want to ask Eric, uh, which universities and programs were you initially accepted to in both undergrad and for your master's? Um, so when I was applying for my undergraduate degree, I actually got accepted to Memorial University first. And then I, then I got accepted to the University of New Brunswick after that. Um, for my graduate degree, um, which is many years later, I got into uh, the university, or sorry, I got into um, yeah, the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. Awesome. And tell us about your, your application journey and based on your experiences, what would be your top tips and pieces of advice and insight that you would want to share with future applicants who are applying to these programs? Yeah, so when I got into, uh, when I was thinking about applying to the University of New Brunswick, um, I was living in Newfoundland at the time, which is where I'm from. And I was thinking about, okay, obviously the courses in high school are going to be a bit different. So they're going to maybe evaluate the courses differently than they would in their own province. And they do. So if you're looking to apply to any province uh, in the country and you're not from there, make sure that you're aware of the criteria they're looking at because they're going to, to, to rank and, and average out your courses differently uh, than they would from somebody in their own province. It's not too at disadvantage you or to put you in an advantageous position. It's trying to make it more fair because of the education curriculum is, I think, regulated provincially. So it's a little bit different. It's really interesting. Um, and what do you wish you had known throughout or if you um, were just starting this process? Um, so I remember back then when I started it, um, which what I had known, I wish I'd known much more options that I had. So like, at the time, I was thinking, I was told by, uh, so I wrestled as well at the University of New Brunswick and then later on McMaster, um, which is where I finished my degree. And one of my wrestling coaches at the time had known a bunch of people that had gone through McMaster and he suggested that I should apply there, right? Because the, um, because the engineering school had a really great name. And I said, well, you know, I don't necessarily have the grades to get in. And I didn't at the time. Um, and then when I got into the University of New Brunswick, um, and I was thinking about transferring later on in the year. What I learned was that uh, once you get into university, uh, whichever one that you're in, if you like it and you want to stay there and complete your degree because there's lots of great opportunities, it's fantastic. If you decide that, hey, there's a program at another school that I want to go to, that's actually a possibility. So I wish I'd known that starting off. Um, and so when I had found out about this, uh, I realized that the, to transfer between universities while you're in your undergraduate degree is actually a lot easier than getting into the best one per se. Um, so I think I needed a, a B average to transfer to McMaster in, in my first year of undergraduate studies at UMB. I'm like, to get into UMB, I needed, I think it was low 80s at the time. It might have changed by now. And then to get in McMaster, it was like a 90. So I had this, um, you know, 10% difference in my high school grades to get into McMaster that I just didn't have. Um, but then I got in later on, so. Yeah, that, I think that will be really helpful for, for people who are maybe in the same position or similar that you were. Um, and you did mention that that you had a very unconventional path and experience. Um, and how did that kind of inform maybe how you, how you look at application processes and specifically the lessons that you learned from your undergrad experiences going into now um, your master's degree for sure. Yeah. So that's a really good question. And I think that's one that people are always asking, right? Like, is there certain things that schools are looking for? Are there certain things that professors are looking for on graduate applications? And in my experience, the answer has always been yes. What they look for, however, hasn't always been clear to me. Uh, when it comes to the undergraduate applications, again, it depends on the school you're looking at and it depends on whether you're applying right out of high school. Um, my best tip for you, if you're applying out of high school to get in university, um, make sure you read thoroughly through the websites uh, that you're trying to, uh, or the websites university that you want to get into, and to make sure your high school grades are good. Um, high school, they're one of the best times, I think, to really explore like who you are as a person, who you want to become in university, or what you're trying to get out of it. And it's important that you really take advantage of your time in high school to learn about um, the different pathways that are available to you, and just know that if you end up choosing one, 
but it's not what you want. There's always options to to change that, right? And you don't need to make that decision right away. So that's what that's what I learned, um, and I wish that uh, I learned it a little sooner. Um, when it comes to um, transferring between universities, um, they have options there for every single different university in Canada. The options for people to transfer because they want you to come into the school. They want you to be their student, especially if you're um, ambitious enough to, to want to do it. So that option is always there and to look into that and to see what the criteria is. And it's different everywhere, but grades do matter to a degree. Um, and when it comes to graduate school, uh, that one's a little trickier. Uh, so it depends on what graduate program you're in. Um, so I know that uh, for yourself, Cassidy, uh, your graduate program application is definitely a lot different than mine because we study different things, right? So I studied engineering. And one of the things that was looked at was, well, do you have research experience in the summer, right? Or did you do it voluntarily or did you uh, do really well in your research courses? Um, it wasn't necessarily about having the highest grades, which is what I thought it was. Grades do matter. You need to meet the minimum cutoffs. Um, but one of the things they look for in particular is trust. Um, someone who has an A-plus average in school, very clearly work very hard. They're very academically inclined. Um, and so you'd imagine that they do really well in grad school and they would excel at it. Um, however, that isn't always the case. And it's because uh, there's many reasons for it. I'm not going to pretend to know why, but, but if there isn't a, a degree of trust and um, between the supervisor and the graduate student, and there's not a personality match, and there's um, there's a lack of understanding what the expectations are and, and what the professional uh, world is actually like, then that can be deterrent for supervisors to take on somebody uh, with an A plus over someone who has a B plus average uh, but can do all those other things. Um, so that would be be my best advice, right? Uh, for, for lack of a better word, improve who you are as a human being, do the best you can in school, and that will actually work out pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Eric. Um, and just to get to, to very concrete questions, um, what was your GPA when you were applying to, to graduate school from McMaster? That's right. So I was one of those B-plus students, right? So I, uh, I had like, on a percent scale, I think I had 76. Um, and then throughout my degree at the beginning, obviously my grades were a lot lower because I was getting adjusted to this new school that was more challenging. At least I thought so. McMaster was more challenging than the University of New Brunswick. That, that transition to that um, different program, it was a big, big, uh, big shock to the system for me. Um, and then getting into a really challenging undergrad program. So I did chemical and then I did chemical and bioengineering, which was a harder program to get into. And then just that like intensity of the course load. Um, and the intensity of the types of courses that I was taking. I think I had to take like 60 courses in total uh, just to get the undergrad degree. Um, it took a, took a hit on the morale a bit and it took a hit on the energy levels, but what you learn and what you get out of it is super valuable because now you have all these, this very broad skill set, and that prepares you for any number of things you might encounter later. And so that's actually taken into consideration uh, when you're applying to graduate school. So although I had uh, say close to a B plus average, the fact that I had taken and done well in all these courses across different um, aspects of engineering, I really show that I have like an interdisciplinary mindset and um, good objective problem solver in, in multiple domains, which is exactly what grad is, right? So that definitely played into my favor, for sure. Awesome. And were there any kind of supplementary applications that were part of your, your grad school applications? And if so, how did you approach, um, if it was like an essay response or a prompt, and it's, yeah, it's super interesting. And I think it'll be super helpful for, for our listeners and specifically those who have a more unconventional path and, and maybe are, are daunted by these applications because of some of the GPA requirements and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. Like, when, so when you go to university um, and then you're in your undergraduate degree, right? So like your grades are going to get you there, whatever degree you get into. And then what you do with that. Um, it could be solely focused on the grades, but then you have a lack of self, you may, you may have a lack of, you may have a self of lack, uh, may, may lack a self-understanding, or you may not have had those social interactions with other people um, who will be able to teach you things that your courses wouldn't. And so I think by the fact that I had that B plus average, I wasn't solely focused on school. Like I was, um, I was wrestling. I was involved in all these volunteer organizations. Um, I was part of this really cool um this other program that kind of supplemented how I looked at the world from a different from different types of angles. And so that for me was like, wow, I don't need to uh, be an expert in all these different domains, but at least if I'm pretty good at like all these different angles, then I, that will definitely help me understand like kind of where I am in my own life and where I am within 
at the broader spectrum of society? And then how is it that my interests can have an impact on my work as a graduate school student? And then what is it that is different that I bring to the table? And so that's sort of what I talked about in my application. It was like, um, I don't have A pluses across the board, but here's everything else that I've been involved with and that I've done. And here's how it will help me excel as somebody who's going to be a, a, a coworker, a researcher, um, and a scientific communicator, right? So, and all those things definitely play into it. And that's how I uh, portrayed myself in the essay. And it was very much uh, genuine. And I think that's part of the key as well, right? Is trying to show them why are you interested in graduate school? Uh, and what is it about you that is um, different or makes you unique as an individual that uh, would make you valuable to have in our, in our graduate school? How will you contribute um, to the uh, intellectual and, and social life there? Very cool. And uh, just as a final question, is there anything else that you would like our viewers to know based on your experiences? Uh, there's a lot of things. I wish we had more time. Um, I would say the number one thing uh, about the entire application process for anything that you're doing, uh, make sure that whatever you're applying to, it's because you're actually interested. Um, if you're not interested in something, but you think that it's going to get you a job in the end, uh, trust me, you will have a difficult time feeling fulfilled in your, uh, in your education. Um, it is always going to be challenging whatever you choose, but just make sure that whatever you do choose is something that uh, A, you're interested in, and uh, B, you think that this is going to make your quality of life better. And if you do those two things as you're applying, going through the process, then it will be worth it. Great. Thank you so much again, Eric. And I hope that you have a great rest of the day. Yeah, thanks you too. And good luck with your, all of your applications, everyone. Thank Cheers. you.